Hey there. So today we are going to be tackling this monster which was sent in by a follower of my Instagram page. So this is not the original problem which he sent. I have made a few modifications to it because the answer to the original question was pretty boring. So the answer to this modified version is much more interesting. So now let's get started. Firstly, if you just look at the entire thing, it looks really intimidating. So that's why we'll take it piece by piece. So firstly, we have n factorial and then over here, uh, we have one minus ln of this stuff. So well, what is this stuff? As n goes to infinity, this basically becomes one plus uh, or one over zero factorial plus one over one factorial plus one over two factorial plus dot 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 and that is equal to e. So as n goes to infinity, this entire thing approaches ln of e, which is one. So this entire thing approaches one minus one zero and this is infinity. So basically we have an infinity times zero situation. And since we are dealing with a discrete variable, we can't use L'Hopital's rule in any form. So with a discrete limit like this, we only have two choices. Firstly, we can do sandwich theorem. And the other option is that we can manipulate this entire expression into something else. And maybe that something else will be easier to evaluate. So the second option is what we are going to do. So firstly, instead of uh, writing this summation out every time, we'll just call this Sn. So S infinity is equal to E. So what we can do is we can write Sn as E minus Tn, where Tn is equal to the sum as k goes from n plus 1 to infinity of 1 over k factorial. So s plus t uh, sn plus tn is equal to e for all n so now what we'll do is we'll rewrite it as the limit n goes to infinity and i'll uh, or actually we'll not even write this we'll just drop this n factorial and this exponent we'll just look at what happens to this part so we have one minus ln of e minus tn so we can write that as minus ln of 1 minus uh, tn over e. So what I've basically done is I've written 1 as e to the 1. So uh, sorry, ln of e to the 1 and we, then we can combine this and this uh, using the sum of ln. And then once we have this, then this is pretty much the simplest form we can have. And now notice that tn goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. So we have a 1 minus 0 situation over here. So now we have two choices. Firstly, we can expand this using the Taylor series of ln. And the other option is we can play around with it a bit more. So both of those options are actually going to lead us to the same thing. But I'll go with the latter one because it's slightly more rigorous. So firstly, I'll get rid of this. Okay, so this is what we have so far. And before we proceed, I'd like to remind you of a certain identity. So if we have this limit and limit as x goes to zero of f of x is zero and x goes to zero of g of x is infinity, then we can say that this is equal to e to the power of limit as x goes to zero f of x g of x. So this is an identity which is derived from the definition of E. So I'm not going to go into where this comes from. If you like, I'll link uh, some videos in the description which can uh, help you learn this. But for now, we'll just take this as a given. And now notice that we can write this as one plus minus Tn over E. So now, since this is inside an ln, if we multiply something to an ln, it will go into the exponent. And we have something which goes to infinity over here. So if we bring this n factorial inside the bracket, then uh, it will go into the exponent. And then we'll have 1 plus this goes to 0 because tn goes to 0. And then uh, n factorial will go to infinity. So we'll have something of this form and then we can utilize it. And the bet even better thing is that we'll have e to the power of something inside ln and that will of course cancel the e out and we'll just be left with this limit. So it's going to simplify quite a bit uh, and now we just need to figure out how to bring this n factorial inside. So well, notice that this exponent goes to 1 as n goes to infinity. So that means what we can do is we'll write this as n factorial 
to the n minus 1 over n plus 1 over n. So all I've done is I've just split it using the laws of exponents. And now what we can do is we'll take this part and put it inside the bracket and we'll keep this part outside the bracket for later. So that way we'll get this exponent and then we can utilize this identity. Okay, so this is what we get and now it may seem really complicated but as I said it's going to simplify quite a lot. So if you look at this thing inside the ln, we have uh, this is f of x and this is g of x and this goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. This is uh, this goes to in, uh, infinity as n goes to infinity. So this entire thing becomes e to the power of minus tn over e into n factorial and then this ln and e cancel out and this minus and minus cancel out so ultimately we are left with n goes to infinity n factorial 1 over n times tn over e n factorial n minus 1 over n and now the good thing is we are we have gotten rid of all the addition that was there we've got gotten rid of the ln and we don't have any exponentials either so other than these two the, uh, we'll take care of that in a while so now uh, you may think that well tn was defined in this complicated way so how will we simplify this and technically there is still an infinite sum hidden inside of tn so how do we deal with that well notice that tn if you remember was k equals n plus 1 to infinity of 1 over k factorial and we have multiplied n factorial to tn so if you multiply n factorial on both sides then this just becomes 1 over n plus 1 plus 1 over n plus 1 n plus 2 plus dot 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 and now with a little bit of sandwich theorem you can make the following argument more rigorous but for now i'll just uh, use a bit of hand waviness and we'll just go with it so notice that this term is infinitely smaller than this term and the next term will be infinitely smaller than this term because as n goes to infinity the ratio of these terms basically goes to zero so all this stuff is basically negligible in front of 1 over n plus 1 because this is much much bigger than each of these terms so this is a bit hand wavy but once again you can uh, make it more rigorous using the sandwich theorem uh, this is strictly greater than 1 over n plus 1 and strictly lesser than 1 over n plus 1 plus 1 over n plus 1 squared plus dot 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 and this is just a gp so you can merge everything together so using this you can uh, make this argument more rigorous using the sandwich theorem but i'll not do that right now it's pretty unnecessary so basically what we get is we can replace this entire thing by 1 over n plus 1 so limit as n goes to infinity n factorial to the 1 over n into 1 over n plus 1 to the n minus 1 over n so this is what we get ultimately and now what we'll do is we'll uh, convert this n plus 1 into n so once again you can make this more rigorous by multiplying and dividing by stuff and then separating out some limits and saying that they go to 1 but i'll not do that right now it's pretty unnecessary so for now we'll just settle with this and what we can now do is we can write this as 1 over n into n to the 1 over n and this goes to 1 because we can write this as e to the ln n over n and this goes to 0 as n goes to infinity so this entire thing goes to 1 so what we ultimately are left with is n goes to infinity n factorial 1 over n all over n and this is actually a well-known limit so if you write it as n goes to infinity n factorial over n to the n whole to the 1 over n this equals 1 over e so you can prove this using uh, by taking the ln of this entire thing and then converting it into an integral so once you convert it into an integral you'll see that it basically becomes e to the minus 1 which is 1 over e so once again i'll not do that right now because uh, it's pretty easy and trivial so i'll just leave it out you guys can try it out so the uh, if you want to try it out on your own a hint is that you can write this as 1 over n 2 over n, 3 over n, 
and so on up till n over n and if you take the ln then this becomes a sum of ln and then uh, using this exponent it becomes an integral so uh, you can try that out on your own and thanks for watching we have 1 over e as the answer thank you for watching